Okay, we're back with another Amos of Teenage Act, Amos of Teenage Act, the Colonists. Okay, so, well, let's just continue. Like, I went a bit further, um, in... Okay, I went a bit further throughout the year, and... I basically... Can you give me a moment? Give me a moment. sorry about that um we okay so i went a bit further okay and i did a couple of things okay so i did tutor um tutor some children okay mostly nougat okay which is a pretty like if you ask me it's a pretty good uh like event okay like i, I want to save some time okay like i don't want to go through every single um I don't want to go through every single event, okay? But uh, let's just say that Nougat thinks of me as like the best teacher ever. And I'm trying to be that way. This time, like, let's go for a teacher and rather than an engineer and then, okay? Like, most of this is like. The second one is basically an improvement of the first one. Um, where I'll still be trying to go for tangent, okay? But. This is what I still I don't like is that you know I I talk, I chat in the I posted in the forum okay and basically there are people who you know mention that tangent uh will not be able to we will we'll be able to romance her but we will not be able to have a you know a happy ending with her so that's a problem but I'll think. I'll think about a way with uh, how we can do it. Uh, but it doesn't stop us you know, from trying to mend the, the relationship between Tangent and this okay? Now, um, another thing I want to say is that if all fails, then I'm gonna go for Nomi Nomi, okay? So I'm I'm giving her as much um, as much gift as possible. Okay? And now currently we're in the in the new place which is um, basically, um, well, I kind of forgot. The only way to the resting ridges is by glider, part vehicle, part kite, and all adrenaline. You land on the rocky broken up spine of the nearest ridge and nearly fall over when you look down at the plummet, plummeting slope into the basin below. You're a long way up. There's an utopia glide beside you. Phew, utopia exclaimed. You handle that glider like a champ, this. You too, Scamo. She peers down over the, the slope down slope of the ridge. A lot more exciting than swamps, right? I want you two to stick together out here. It's dangerous in those ancient co convergent domain ruins. Convergent domain ruins? You look around, the landscape is like nothing you've ever seen before. Dry cracked soil gives away to steep cliffs and what little vegetation here is brittle and sharp. You can feel the dry air wick away the moisture in your lip. Wait, what the heck is that? glowy thingy on the round. You point that out, Utopia gives it a nod to her foot. Beat me, she says. You unearth the object, it's pulsing with light and warm to the touch. Hold up, Utopia says. Don't just go picking uh, picking things up. It's come on. Could be radioactive, you know. Utopia waves her hollow palm crystal over it and check, checks her interface. Hmm, only a little, she concludes. Whatever it is, it looks old. Like thousands of years old. Must have been digging up glowing gadgets all over this region. But got no clue what they're for. You hang on to that one. Maybe you'll figure it out. Okay. Um, Curse the stuff way down below. 
Oh, those? Utopia says pointing to a crystal formation so densely packed into the ravine, it looks like a sparkling river. More outcroppings of crystal decorate the slopes, they are all over the place. Be careful with them, not sure if they are animal, vegetable, or mineral. She points off into the distance, there's a big island of them um, over there. Like a glacier, covers the whole damn place. May, might be related to conversion domain, but we ain't sure yet. Okay. Uh, what's that? Cute little nose being on your um, cute little face. Utopia narrows her eyes at you and just stares you down. Then she breaks into a grin. I don't know what you're playing at, Scammo. She puts an extra em emphasis on her accent. But you ain't getting any special treatment from yours truly just for buttering me up. You have to pull your own weight just like the rest of the surveyors here. Now go on kid, try not to fall off a cliff. <laughs> Ooh, there's another one. Uh, like we managed to upgrade my... We managed to upgrade Riki to level 3. Plus 1 skill on challenge would win. Plus 5 to vote to street. I wonder how many like pets we can have. That's what I'm wondering. You know? Oh well, let's check it out. What's this? There's oddly there's a strange heat heat haze shimmering across the path ahead. Oddly it doesn't it doesn't clear up as you get closer. The mirage effect is very strong. The refracted air makes it look like there's a pool of water on the ground and plants waving around it. But something is just off about the illusion. You can't put your finger on why investigate. Hmm. Triple five. I'm not thinking of going through all of this, okay? I might reload if this um if it proves nothing. Let's see forty. And huh. I think that's good enough. Like I don't think we can have a better one yet. Mm, yeah, I think this is the best. Let's just check it out. The faster you move, the faster the mirages disappear. You approach cautiously. As you do, you realize what is wrong about the mirage. It's impossible. The plants on the other side of the haze are different. Not just wibbly wobbly from the layers of air, but bigger, older. And it's a different time of a day, evening, not morning. Then, you see him. It's you, through the heat, heat haze, you see yourself in the distance walking towards you. You move to the edge of the mirage and peek around, around it. You can only see him through the heat haze. It's like some kind of doorway or a mirror fall out. You shout, hey you, and wave your arms up, up, your arms and jump up and down. The figure looks at you curiously. You, it's definitely 100% you, staring back at you like a mirror. Your movement seems to disturb the mirage, which brings up and fades before you. Behind, it is regular during the morning and you are now alone again. Weird. Okay, so it doesn't, it's not that, how should I say this? It's not that help. Um, uh, that that helpful or like give anything new new information like since we have max perception we can we can go around it Let's check out this you're getting thirsty you feel for your ba your backup canteen but it's missing somehow you lost it since you left this morning and you're all out of drinking water uh search for water let's see Uh, what about this? Just do the card and jam. Go. Three, 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 three. 
Mm. Okay, fine. Let's take it. The shit mark here. Three, four, five, six. Push through. I wonder if there's anything good from this. There's no natural water around, but if you search, you find you turn in your search, you found you turn up your lost canteen. Wow, that's a lucky. Mm, never mind then. It's not worth it. This the Western resting ridges. Let's check. A precarious natural land bridge drops down sharply on both sides here. You kick a rock over the side but don't hit here it here it hit the bottom. Do you cross? Cross the bridge very carefully. Ooh, nice. You shuffle across slowly, examining the crack and sticking to the solid places. You accidentally send a few more pebbles skittering over the edge. And think better them than me. Okay, never mind. We at least got a new card, and it's pretty good as well. What's this? A beautiful little locust lands on your arm. It calmly washes off its face with its forearms and vibrates its wing like it's cooling off. Ah, uh, the poor little guy is alone, befriended. Wait, a new pet? A new pet? I'll take it, if it's the case. Okay, next round. Oof. Look at that. 40. You ask me if it go like this. Maybe forty, huh? Okay, what if I turn this Okay? Send it to the back. Okay, what do I put? Okay, got it. Done. You look it up on the hollow palm. It's a mass wing. Named because when it's frightened, it opens its wing all the way and flips them forward, making it look like a grimacing manticore. Scary. But even scary is how much they can eat. They usually they usually eat if you plant matter, but they are not above eating fabric, wood, hair, or even skin. They swarm in dust in hot places like the ridges. You see something out of the corner of your eye and look up from your blue friend. Mm hmm. In the distance, you see a haze above the ground. It's the locust, each one bigger than your fist. These insectoids can eat their weight in under an hour. There are millions of them out there, and they'll be here soon. Your body takes off to join its friends, but you, and you gotta go. You make you make it to your glider in time, thankfully. You come back to this place later in a week. What foliage there had been now is stripped bare. The only thing still standing are the crystals glinting in the sunlight. Okay, that. In a sense, that's lucky. In a sense. Wait, did we take this event before? Ah, okay, okay. This is the um. What? The the keys one. Okay, let's go through this side. This. The sun goes behi behind a cloud and you feel a light splattering or flame. It sizzles into the dry hot ground around you, providing a little relief from the heat of the day. Then you realize 
You don't see a single cloud in the sky ahead of you, and it almost never rains in the western ridges. The plants here rely on, on nighttime dew for moisture. Look up. A herd of folk cows are bobbing overhead like hot air balloons, drifting west in the prevailing winds. You've seen this creature being milked in the colony farm. During migration season, their helium sac swells to make them lighter than air so they can safely travel great distances. You also heard that what they use for ballast. That wasn't rain at all, it was flowing cow piss. <laughs> okay, we can skip. Now if you ask me, like I took the the eagle app uh, augmentation and it seems that's the useless among all. The most useless among all, so like I can easily level up my uh my perception. You're created to a spectacular sight, an enormously long caterpillar dragon kind of creature way off in the distance. It's thousands of legs and kilometers of sh shimmering body shaking in and out of the haze at the bottom of this chasm. You just watch it. It's terrifying. It's like a train. Take some readings. It's so far away but you record its movement and coordinates and take a video for Utopia. Hmm. Okay. Should I? Nah, I don't think we need it. Oh, by the way, I have so much kudos. Okay. We carefully pick a yellow flower. Every so often, you see some absolutely massive creatures here, like giant snake dragons with thousands of legs and shimmering scales. They're so large that if one crosses your path, you're you're in for a wait. Which is exactly what you're doing. The gargantuan dragon has been slowly lumbering over this ridge for at least half an hour, its body disappearing into the heat haze of the chasm on both sides, its feet slowly undulate across the crack door, making shushing noises and scattering boulders in its wake. Time up on its back. The creature is moving more than slowly enough for you to climb up, using its large saw spikes as handholds. It's going to take hours to get anywhere interesting, but from up from up on its back you can see further. Also, there are other creatures up here. They climb up right next to a cluster of dogs moth, heads tucked under their wings like they're sleeping, and the other direction there's even a bush bump. Or rather, it looks like a pile of rocks and some twigs. Hmm when I see where it's going. Centimeter by centimeter, the Goliath makes its way to the chasm. You feel the air grow thick, thicker and less hospitable, until the sheer density of the heat and the drought make you feel generally concerned of your safety. You climb up the creature's back segment by segment, until you, you're back onto the top of the ridge, then drop down to the other side. Phew, scary. Okay, let's see what, what the other two will lead us. Okay, climb on its back. Climb down to the other side. Mm, not really. Let's see the other one with the Dobbs Moth. As for the Dobbs Moth, you wait into the cluster of dogs while swinging your arms and feet wildly. They erupt in a cloud of dust, soft, soft wings, and beating against your face as they flutter away in agitation. You sneeze, but that's all. That's all that happens. You climb down to the other side and continue your, on your way. Okay. Not bad. Ooh. Strange device. The path ahead is blocked by a field of shake, snaking vines and brambles. They are flowering, enormously happy blossoms swaying in the shimmering heat waves. You could push through them, but your whole palm beats the warning. It's a radiation warning. These flowers seem to have highly to be highly radioactive, far too radioactive for the mild shielding of your suit provide. You might be able to pass if you don't mind feeling the effects of radiation sickness until you can detox up at a mad bed. It, while if it doesn't kill you outright, radiation is unpredictable. Radioactive plant. You snack a sample so you can study in your phonic data. Mm. Should I push through or should I turn around? 
I think we should turn around. But I can go and get past it. Let's check on this side. Ah, another steering device. Let's see it here. You're trudging along when you suddenly uh, when suddenly you're buffeted by a hot wind? No, like a very hot wind. Literally hot. The ridges are already baking. All of a sudden it feels like you are trapped in a nuclear reactor. The skin dries out and your lips begin to crack. Your eyeballs feel like sandpaper. Find the source. You take careful readings of from a distance, triangulate them and discover the source of the wind, a red swath wall sized crystal emanator, hidden in a small crack. Crevice when you smash it. It doesn't shatter like crystal. It almost looked like it, it could have been organic. Was it some kind of defensive barrier? Yet another mystery of these ridges. Okay. Let's go. What's this? You investigate a weird squeaking noise, eventually following it to its source, an undulating swarm of sleek creatures are gathered on the cliff above you. You watch as they throw their tiny bodies off the edge, plummeting past you out of sight. They scream in they scream and screech in excitement. Get close to investigate. You pick your way down the slope, finding a second herd of miraculously unharmed weasels at the bottom. As you watch them, one lands on your head and squeaking indignantly goes to uh, squeaking indignantly goes to join the rest of the king. Out. You hear the flapping of, of wings and look up. A whole colony of pink and orange dwarf moth clings to the rock overhead, nearly camouflaged. As the squealing of the weasels above, above reaches a fever pitch, the dwarf moth rapidly takes off from the cliff and flutter around. You watch as one of the little creatures pitches off, pitches off the edge of the cliff and lands off, then square on the dwarf moth's back. Sending them both plummeting to the bottom. As the large mouth crashes uh, fatally into the ground, the weasel curls its body and bounces harmless away, then scurries back to feed on its prey. Ooh, bounce weasel. You record the screeching on your whole palm. What a noise. Huh. Okay, can't go here. Okay, we can head down. You're walking along a ridge line when you when your foot knocks some rocks down the slope. You anticipate the familiar slider as they plunge down into the chasm, but realize it's silent, just the wind. You peer down the slope, nothing's falling. Wait, the rocks you dislodge with your feet are just floating. You take a step forward and realize you feel lighter too. Like you've taken off your mountaineering gear. You take another step forward. It's a struggle to keep your foot on the ground. If one more step forward, you realize it's possible to take both your feet off the ground. You're floating. You nudge your foot and let the momentum float you forward a few feet, feeling more untethered by gravity the further you go. The ridge line is narrow with a steep drop on either side. There's no way around this strange anti gravity field, and if you fall out of it, you might plummet into the chasm. Onward, then this is a bravery challenge, and I prefer to like um, since it's going to be a bravery, bravery like we're probably gonna get a couple of it. Mm. I want to put five five five, but then this one card becomes three. Hello, sprockets, okay. Uh, it's morning here, okay? Like, I'm exploring this place here, um, hoping to, you know, get the new information um, on how this planet works. Next. Tree. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Tree. 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 Two. Maybe we don't. Okay, next round. Does three do does three do means challenge people? Okay, this one we put here because it's unchangeable, so we're not gonna lose one. Uh, 
plus two to last card. Plus three during challenges. I want another card. Draw card. Nope. Okay, well I'll do this. Nah, I can't do it. Use roots. Ah, this is good, this is good. Mom's love. Okay, then we turn it yellow. Just nice. Seven, seven, eight. Okay. Plus one skill on challenge win. You float forward, allowing yourself to rise higher and higher until you are able to swim and tumble through the air with ease too. Ooh, wow, it's totally weightless. You float over a shiny lumpy rock, jutting from the spine of the ridges. As you pass over it, you feel gravity gently begin to embrace you again, pulling you back down. Your feet touch the ground again on the other side, and your legs immediately give out. What a rush. You mark the location on your map for other surveyors. Huh? Let's explore the place first. Where am I? Hey! You guys did hear that, right? The thumping? And it's this machine again! You find your way blocked by a massive wall? No, a hollow pillar. Knocked over and lying on its side in, in the sand. It's absolutely massive. It stretches to your left and right at least a kilometer in each direction. So at some point it crumbles enough that you could lightly scale over it. Hmm, should I check that out? Yeah, of course. Let's see. Five, six, nine. Okay. Five. Wait, like this. Okay, next round. Okay, the shimmer. Thirty-seven, just nice. This looks giddy as as you follow the pillar to its base, a large pyramid almost entirely lost under the sand. You brush away some of the sand and find that the pyramid is inscribed in, on all set of the pictures of well, wormholes to think. This pillar must have once stretched up into the sky, maybe it was some kind of observatory or sacred building, or just a monument to the wormhole. Mysterious. Oh, crystal. I hardly found anything, you know, here. Wow, except for the strange device. You're scaling a huge rock, pla rock plateau when you suddenly overcome with an incredible feeling of peace. Ah, so this is the place that he was mentioning before. He said that he have a secret place. He never felt anything like this. It literally feels lighter, like all your troubles have been lifted away. The feeling is strong here when you touch the rocky surface and you realize it's radiating from the rock. And this is here. This is signing himself on top of the rock, stripped down to his shirt. He looks up as your shadow falls over him. Oh, he says slowly. You found it too, huh? Oh, this must be the place this told you about, his favorite place on the planet. The rock that makes him feel happy, you know how he feels now. He shades his eyes from the sun and he looks up to you. I haven't told anyone about this place, he says. Well, except you. That's how they get to you, you know, he says. Once they know you love something, they can use it to control you. Who's they? This is just easy. You know, people, the world, life, he says. I like this place because it feels like it's somewhere I'm not just a cog in the machine, you know? You're going you're going to keep it a secret though, right? This us. I don't want this place dug up and studied. 
You ruined it, he scowled. People always ruin things, especially researchers. Some things you don't need to understand. Uh, yeah, okay, self secret. You do take a few readings, though, just because all data is important. You mark down the location but fudge the coordinates so anyone they send out afterwards will get lost. You wonder if the rock is natural. Animals seem to really like it. As you're taking readings, you watch a swarm of dog moth basking on the rock as well, just like this. Then you lie down on the rock beside this, letting the strange magic fill you with incredible sense of peace, love, and unity with the universe. By the way, we still haven't um get the the final like the final boss event. You haven't been down to the deepest crevice of the ridges, where the crystal grew thick and the air is stagnant and dead. It's already sweltering on the on the ridges, but in the chasm you can see the heat warping in the air, almost like it's a permanent fog. Utopia says the air is so thick and still, you can't even use your glider down there. At least one thing survived in the case though. While you take a break for lunch one day, you can see flickers of silver dot, uh, silver dot in and out of fog, like ripples of, of light on the lake. As you unpack your tiffin box, the silver flashes, uh, silver flashes come up out of fog and begin to surround you. They're animals, eyeless, almost translucent creatures about the length of your arm, trailing meters long tentacles behind them. Their mournful cooing is magical and strange. You look up to them on your fall palm. Oh, air squid babies. Wait, air squids are predators. Oh, that's a lot of cards. What should I do? First collectible is free, okay. So six. Three three. Next. I think I can use all five. Okay, let's try. Five, five, five. Okay, next. Hmm, six. Four. Three. Push through. Wait. Plus first. Just five stress. Because it is free after all. Victorious. Two perception. You duck behind some roots and keep perfectly still as the cre creepy creature float around and pass you. They don't seem to be hunting for food. They must be on their way somewhere else. Until they suddenly turn back and zero in on your location. You find yourself surrounded by a curious baby air squid as their tentacle begin to pass over the ground looking for you. You're not you're not gonna get it today. You leave a tiffin and, and bolt, paying no need to the noise they are making as rocks slither down the side of the chasm. As you run, you swear you run right past someone. What? Where did he come from? Behind you! You think you hear him making a low hooting noise. By the time you realize the asquid are no longer chasing you, he's gone. Mysterious Stranger Hey, this is over there. Ooh. We gotta be careful though. We only have one left. But we'll go for this, okay? This is on this side. This is to the left. Ah, there he is. This is an entirely different person when it comes to outside of a colony wall. Without people constantly trying to correct his uh, social behavior, it's like he's blossomed into someone who's actually confident. The more time you spend with this out here, the more glimpses you catch the, of the real this. But you can't do this, he says jumping off a huge boulder and doing a cool roll at the end. 
Wait, no, but you can't do this with your eyes closed. I can. You and this cavort, uh, cavort around, daring each other to do more and more dangerous things. This isn't scared of anything. You think you can see something up on one of the plateaus above you? The cliffside is covered with convenient vines. Dare this to race you to the next checkpoint. You're off before he even, you even finish the sentence. This hollering, no fair, as you leave him in the dust. The two of you run and continue your day. Ah, uh, okay. I want to see if like we can gain some, like, reduce some stress. The now your turn. Well, you dare him, so you gotta follow through. The vines are slippery and dangerous. Some of them are still, uh, are even alive, and wriggle when you grab them. You lose your grip at the top, and you slip and start to fall. But this grabs you. Gotcha. This scream pulling you over the ledge. Your heart is thumping and you're all sweaty from fear. But you did it. This looks so calm and collected. Even though he just climbed the same treacherous wall and have to save you from a long fall. Why doesn't he ever seem scared? The plateau is empty, but it provides a great view to look out over the resting ridges. You and this take a break and watch a shadow creep across the dusty, craggy landscape. This is the life, this says. No school, no gossip, no bullies, and no telling me what to do or think. He props his el elbow up and his knee squints into their stance. He moved with my augmentation in the colony. I always feel like a coward. But maybe the problem isn't me, it's everyone else, you know. I'm not scared of any usual stuff, monsters, getting hurt, even dying, like who cares? He continues. But humans keep finding ways to control people with fear. Well, they can't control me. Huh? What is this augment? No sense of fear. Oh. Fear keep us safe though. This one. Fear keeps you safe. I have to actually use my brain to decide for myself what risks are worth taking. You could have pulled me over the cliff with you, but I didn't let something stupid like being afraid of heights keep me from saving you. You don't point out their feelings to what, what, uh, was what got you into trouble in the first place. Ah, uh, okay. Even though it's great that I learned, but I think I should go for that final boss one at the at the end. The boss one are always in yellow. Um, in Valley of Vertigo, there's two boss event. And usually the boss events will lead you to, will lead you back to the, well, an easy way back home, easy to say. Let's check it out. Expedition has been collecting energy readings from this area, tracing the individual in invisible ley lines of power like the one from the thumper that brought you here in the first place. They pointed you to this cave, a nexus of power at the convergence of many lines. You can feel the energy is different here. Like a barely perceivable hum that prickles up the back of your neck. Like something is watching you. It's likely this was some sort of important place for the convergent domain. Utopia says, leaning on her glider. I sent team so, but it gets mighty tight in there. I'm hoping you and this might have a better luck wiggling in there. She continues. Might be the caves up. Uh, might be the cave inside open up again. And if they do, take plenty of readings and report back to me. This is vibrating beside you, on nearly the same frequency as the weird power fluctuation. This is the real deal. He whispers, mostly to himself. Utopia nods and leave it to you. What's the plan? Prep your caving equipment. This time you get headlamps and little recording drone with a floodlight, floodlight attachment. A tiny buzzing flying thing that circles around your head and sometimes illuminates what you want to look at. It's intelligent, which just means it won't just do what you want. This bats an eye at its annoyance. Utopia also left you an anti-grav belt with a warning to, the, to practice extreme caution while spelunking down there. They make you lighter so you can climb up more easily and won't hurt yourself in the foot. Yeah, uh, as you fall. Enter the cave. The narrow entrance leads to a bigger room that animals have clearly used as a den. It's enormous with glowing mushrooms on the walls and piles of bone in, in some crevices. In some domain, the walls are made iridescent, convergent domain obsidian. Like this was once a great hall millennia ago. You can feel a cool breeze coming from somewhere, but it'll be tricky to find the dark. 
quite fine. Okay. Ooh, this is bad. Okay. What should I do? Four, four. Get this one. We're gonna turn it. Man, eighty-one. You've gotta be kidding. Okay, okay. Let's load. Maybe we need to change this. We need to remove this and let's put in Sun Medallion too. Let's enter without the caving equipment. Huh. Okay. Next. This one here. Give them yellow flower. Next round. Yeah, next round. 34. 34 is doable. Huh? Wait, what? I have to use it again? Okay, win. You find the source of the breeze by tossing some fine sand into the air and watching which way the dust blows. It's a very tight crack. Good thing you and this are so small. You squeeze through and have to shimmy along on your belly for about 10 meters, pushing your gear ahead of you. It's uncomfortable but this excitement draws you on. Past the crack, there are fewer signs of animals. The walls are smooth grown obsidian, which has some kind of melted rainbow oil stick look. There are deeply carved glyphs on the walls at various intersections, like room des designation or street names, you wonder. And other kinds of basins, alcoves, grove into the rock, full of odd protrusions, all ancient and worn and in inexplicably now. It feels homey. You come to realize the convergent domain must have lived underground. That's why there are so few ruins on the surface. As you follow the cave complex down, it's clear this used to be a well-traveled path. The corridors branching off to other places are now blocked off. It's as if a big earthquake had rattled this whole area. Only this one main path is still clear. It's too convenient to be a coincidence. The floor of the cave slopes downward like a slide and it's quite slippery. Pay attention to your footing. You follow the cave system down, 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 all the way to what must be the bottom of the cliffs. You have to climb down a three-story wall in the last section and are grateful to your anti-graph belt for making it easier. You're still tired though. You can see dim light below. Daylight? Wait. We went underground and we found... What? You emerge into the hidden valley, totally surrounded by tall cliffs. Did you just come down all that way? You're surrounded by the ruins of converted domain buildings. It's much better condition than the windswept ones on the surface. It's perfectly still here, and as quiet as space itself. What was this? This whispers reverentially. Some sort of converger facility? And it feels so familiar. You remember this place from your dreams? Wait, I didn't I didn't get this before. Uh, and feel a uh, throbbing sense of importance that is unnerving. Something momentous happened to you here, or will happen to you someday. Oh shit, you poke around a little then call Utopia to give her your coordinates. She swings down on, your, on her glider with extra ones for you and this tethered behind it. You're happy you won't have to climb all the way back up, she whistles. Great fine kids, this space didn't show up 
on any of our area scan. Took me a while to find a route in. You look bush, she says. I'll stick around to get some reading, but you head on back to the depot and I get and get some rest. Don't worry, we are gonna push. We aren't gonna push on without you. Go home. Done. And I need to rest. You're browsing the colony building board on your hollow palm over breakfast, then you notice a few posts from Nomi. It seems to be a short story. The title is Xenos to the Rescue. Oh boy! You open the story and read through it. Actually, you think you and Nomi did okay. Sure, the premise is taking a uh, talking magical is a little shaky, and Nomi doesn't really spend time establishing the character's motivation, but it's still an entertaining read. Ah. Uh... Like this one here, if you didn't have enough creativity, then like you're not gonna probably help. Um, that's why you get you did like this lukewarm response. But in the last round, my creativity was high enough that I can help her. Lamal, this sucks. Dino suck. Uh, my sweaty ball sack. Uh, next month. Okay, it's glow month. Get ready for our attack. Oh. We're gonna rest in the in the geodomes, but I want to find for stuff. Uh, uh, nope. Yeah, it's not helping. Hey, let's talk about parents. Despite your dad standing still, his eyes closed and head tilted to the sun. Hey Gooseberry, he says, recognizing you just from the sound of your footsteps. Have you paid attention to the planet during glow? It feels different. He blinked his eyes open. It's like a hum, he continues. Maybe from the planet. Uh, maybe from the plants. Heck, maybe the wormhole. Take care of yourself. Okay, so not, nothing special. Well, give me a second. I want to check out something. Visit the supply depot. Nothing. Oh well. Seriously, no, no collectibles. Oh well. Time to rest. Relax in the park. Everyone in Geopony is on edge during glow. It's close to the colony wall, so if there's an attack on this side, you might lose years and years of progress on the fuse, or worse, the geoponics, geoponics dome. There's nothing you can do about it except hope that the defenses are strong, uh, strong enough to hold. That sense of helplessness make it hard to work. Okay, so there's no, no event here, so let's change. I was hoping like I can... Wait. I think maybe this. Okay, remove this, Ricky. Maybe you need to equip your pets. Ah, uh, you can't. Okay, let's see. Maybe we rest. We go and rest here, the living quarters, we like the lounge. The old lounge is, to is toast, what was left over from an attack, okay last row, was destroyed in the crash. Uh... Nope, no events. Let's check out the... The barracks. Let's relax over there. Wait, is there anything here? Nope. Relax on the walls. Okay, there's nothing. Um, I think I'll take this out. Pop my facts. You're relaxing in your quarters when your dad, uh, with your dad when you hear the calling siren. The enemy is here. Your dad looks up from his novel. Huh? Seems early this year. We should head to the shelter in the lounge. Okay, this one here. Let's rush to the front lines. You must stay with, with the rest of the defense force at the gate. Red and Lum are arguing on what tactics to employ. Lum keeps trying to rally soldiers with a heartening speech about giving it everything they've got, 
all the drones, all the explosive, and Red keeps cutting it, we don't need to take any big risks, Red and Fifth. It's a small attack, and we have more than enough plus rifle and turret. We should save our resources for where we do need them. Why do things halfway, Lum exclaimed. We need to get in there and kick their asses back to the gooey to the goo they came from. We need to show people that we have everything under control for morale. Red tries one more time to wrest control uh, of the forces back from Lum, but Lum cuts him off. Fire the explosive rounds, he orders. Arm the charges. Shells scream through the per permanent night, followed by the explosions you feel vibrate up your boots. The helios are unfazed, but you and the other shredder guards exchange nervous looks. You hear yelling, then another boom as the secondary explosive detonates. The baying of bloodthirsting animals reaches your ears, then... Lum holds his finger to his ear speak. Great work, just the stragglers incoming. Open the gates. Combat challenge. Well, it's only 59. Okay. Next round. Four. Mm, from the looks of it. Wait. Like this. Sixteen. Okay, I know what to do. Okay. Mm, yeah, this 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 is the way. Ah, I should have taken the kudos. You face up against a lesser Zeno, some kind of fin semi aquatic thing, already half dead and limping dodgily through the gates. It's almost comical how easy it is to stun and kill it. By the time you're done, the other soldiers have dispatched the rest of the creatures. Smoke drifts in from the battlefield from the explosion and acrid sand of triumph. After the attack, Lum gathers everyone in the lounge and holds a big celebration for the soldiers. They are feasting and drinking and songs of valor, and as the party goes on long into the night, Lum drifts in pairs or more. Mars and Rex keep the dancing going, even Anamone seems to relax. Especially when the other cadets invite her to, to drink with them. Kyle and Tammy sit together and talk all night, giggling about something and going quiet when anyone comes near. Tonight, everyone seems to be convinced that this victory will, means the colony will be safer forever. Maybe it will be, you should want to believe it. Early quiet. Quiet is basically the winter? As you can see, it's, it's like snow, spark snow. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go for. Ah, uh, yeah. Never mind. I have a present for you. I don't know if she likes this. Like strange devices, normally gas and takes uh the strange device turning it, turning it over in your hand for me really, I can't wait to crack it open and see what makes it tick. Glad she likes it. Anything? Ah, good. Then I don't need to go out. Gotta give Rex this. Got your present. Much dog wood. Nothing a dog likes more than a stick, right? Okay. I think I should go out, but I don't know where. This is relaxing the back of one of the expedition vehicles absorbed in a hollow novel. You clear out your throat and he jumps and gives you an awkward but genuine smile. Hey, it's Gamma. He said, pulling his snakes out of the way so you can climb in beside him. It's getting harder to find places to be alone here, don't you think? I've killed to be out exploring, but Utopia insists we have a rest day. He rolls his eyes. 
This closet is hollow up inside. It's just so crowded here, he complains, and it's boring. Why are we resting when we could be out there? There's still so much to discover, and I'm sitting around reading an old sci-fi novel from Earth instead of living a real life one. He looks you in the eye. Tell it to me straight, Stella. He says, do you think there's sentient life out there? Nothing's out there but murderous anymore. If there is, I never met it. Really? This asks you with a secretly smile. There's some wild stuff out there, Gamu. You just need to need an open mind. You should come with me on an expedition sometime. I can show you around. Are you saying aliens exist? This licks his lip. Well, if they live here, they are not really aliens, he says slowly. We are the aliens technically. Wow. He have a point. He rubs the back of his neck. Never mind, forget what I said or anything. He continues. But you should come out sometime. Maybe you see when what you see out there might surprise you. Okay, just a moment. I just want to check out something. Yeah, I want to check out the guide. I want to check out the guide. Um, let me see. Maybe I need to check the jobs part. Um, the job board. Let's see. Expedition. Okay. Serving the rich. First, location of collector city. Okay. Second boss event that involves discovering the really can figure. Either of the discovery. Wait, relay? Either after destroying the city or a boss event while forging in the plains? Oh, we gotta go to the plane. Survey the plane. After source, figure the deeper exposure of the city, this will require fully rested. Being and I guess it's passing a toughness and reason check. Inside to the reload. Okay, okay. So it says here, I'm gonna save here and like we rename it Explore. Okay. They say in the plane, right? Second boss event that involves discovery really can be triggered either after discovering the city uh, or as a boss event while forging in the planes. Okay, let's let's survey the planes. Is what they say. A boss event here. Let's go and check it out. Ooh, Nomi Nomi's there. Ah, uh, never mind. I don't want it. Oh, I can just press escape. You made up with this and Nomi Nomi. They stumble upon something strange and are arguing over what to do with it. It's a big blue crystal, knee high and warm to the touch. It looks like there's something inside it. We gotta crack it open and see what's inside, Nomi exclaimed. It could be anything. Are you a psychopath? This retort clearly offended. What if it's alive? We're gonna screw with the biological balance because we're bored? It's for science! Naomi pouts, turn to you. Come on, Scammo will Scammo will do it, right Scammo? Ah, uh, scan it. You use some surveying equipment to detect a heartbeat, proving that yes, it is alive. You can't tell much else since the scanner seems to be blocked by the crystal, but it's something. Naomi's absolutely delighted, the three of you happily leave it at that. Okay, let's check. And nope, don't need it. Uh, ignore them. Purple fruit animal? Study them. Maybe this is. Maybe I should do this. Part mm, becomes two. Part becomes two. Okay. 
Nice, we got this. Let's see how many eggs we have. Oh, we'll just win it. That's one skill. The creature's fur is like grass, so they must be some kind of photosynthesis. An animal that gets part of the energy from the sun. They couldn't be a for uh arbo arborescent photosynthesis bush rub because they they've got branches growing out their heads and back. You check a survey journal. It says bush rubs are common here, but they are smaller solitary creatures, so nope. They are too small to be a Balneal photosynths who don't usually leave the water to find a new species. Maybe, that would be cool. You decide to name them just in case. You look at them through your holoculars at maximum zoom. You can kind of make make out that they have super long jaws with a huge underbite. You name them Sunbaskers. Naming thing is hard, so Sunbaskers will have to do. You log in your discovery. At least there's something. And let's skip them. I already have max animals. Uh, it's a bit. Well, this this not meant to. This is some peaceful place right here. Okay, load. Don't see it. Start to meditate. Mosaic plane. Uh, ignore it. One of the job as a way to document the flora and fauna for, for photograph. You see a thing that skittish flock of really long insects. Each of them has 10 to 20 set of wings, like long rods with knobbly bits at regular points. They are moving so fast they almost blur. You got a camera built into your whole palm. It's not equipped to capture difficult shots like this. You need to put in the work. Uh Well both are the same. Try to get through. Crossly crawl up beside your subject, raising your hollow palm to get best close up possible. Ouch, just as the camera takes out the photo, your photo your subject bites you on the finger. Ah, you hope it's not venomous. On the other side, you got the shot. Ah, uh, I guess that's not a good idea. Find a good angle. Hard to get plus one. Okay, next. Asking an adult. Okay, next round. This time we're gonna use red. Perception plus 4. You climb up a tree and get an angle from above, not disturbing your subject. It comes out great, very avant garde. Utopia is glad for the shot. Uh, 
Okay, flowers. Nothing. Nothing. Remember, we need to like get the, the boss event. Ali. We can. Ah, oh, there, there. You've been saved a few times from certain doom, or at least discomfort, and it can't be a coincidence. Something or someone has taken an interest in you. You're being followed. You're beginning to get a feel for this place and its dangers. But the next time you hear its hiss or click or a nest of hungry snap ladders, you walk straight towards it, keeping an eye for anyone watching you from the trees. There, just as you think you are going to have to climb into a, the damn nest to get, a save, to get your savior to show up, you see a shadowy humanoid figure darting behind the tree. You make eye contact and you both freeze. His almond-shaped eyes widen in not quite human face and he slips away into the jungle, tracking carefully. Rather than rush after him, you use your tracking skills to carefully follow his path and take up on him. He pounds like a manticore and the two of you tumble out to the ground, to pin his arm. Huh? You get a good look of it at his face for the first time. The long delicate features, the odd tone of his skin, almost purple. Purple. And his glitz glittering alien eyes before he, he can answer your question you jump off him and back away who what is he looks like she though well assuming he brushes the dirt off his clothes and stands up tall very tall you have to take another step back to get a proper a good look at him how tall is he, is he? you catch a glimpse of a pale purple wrist under his tattered back sleeve Delicate like bird bones. I'm a gardener, he purrs. And you're trespassing on my planet. Now that you can see his all of him, you confirm he's definitely not human. Besides the purple tint to his skin, he also just constructed differently. Human but not. And taken as a whole these little discrepancies add up to something decidedly alien. You're an alien? He laughs, a light infectious chuckle that sounds more animal than human. It goes on for a bit too long. You think he might be poking fun at you. Actually, you're the alien here if you think about it. You do think about it, and he's right. And how the heck can we communicate? Right? Like, did he study us? He jumps into a large rock and crosses, eyeing you thoughtfully. Let's make a deal, he says. He speaks in an odd inflection, putting the wrong stress on things. But the words themselves come easy enough for him. I'm not supposed to talk to you, he says. It's against the rules, but since you caught me, I can grant you one wish. He solves mysteriously. Is it okay? Uh, uh, I wish to know more about you. He gives you a sly look. In time, Skirmo. I hope we... He pauses and his eyes unfocus for a moment. He says... He stares staring straight straight ahead, unblinking. Then he slowly stretches like a cat and stands up. Well, this has been fun, but I'm afraid duty calls. He drops off an invisible head towards you. My name is Symbiosis, by the way. Sim, if you like. Um, symbiosis is where a relationship where both sides will get something. If parasite is like only one side is gaining while the other side suffers. But symbiosis, like I say, is like a cycle of positive. He jumps behind the rock and disappears. Literally, he disappeared. You search all around and can find no trace of where he might have gone or how. Stars, you just met an alien. Well, we are the alien. On this planet, anyway. Let's check. Uh, no. Okay, boss event. You've been tracking up a gentle incline for what feels like hours before you finally reach the edge of the cliff. The paint sprayed out before you as far as, the, as you can see in every direction, sparkling lakes reflecting perfect circles of sky. Spark snow drifts lazily through the air, flickering like fireflies in the, in the distance. Everything sounds muffled and peaceful. 
one of the suns is setting and the other is rising. It's spectacular. Just join to this shortly afterwards, just speechless. Keep a watchful eye out. Start get plus one. Two, one, two, three. Okay. Hmm. I think I use red. One, two, three. Next, twenty six. Okay, let's try this. Okay, just nice. Victorious. Perception plus four. In the jungle, you're never safe. You stand and watch. There's some animal activity, but nothing out of the ordinary. At least you get some practice. Go home. The sun rises after glow, heralding a new year. It's your 16th birthday. You wake up in your new quarters, blinking into watery sunlight. Dust motes float through the air, and you take a moment to enjoy the perfection of your bed while you listen to the sounds of the colony waking outside. So much has happened in one year. Just a few short months ago, you thought your life was over, and now it's better than ever. There's plenty of food, and the colony is safe. You even have your own bedroom, and continue snoozing until your parents wake up when your reverie is interrupted by a blinking hollow message. The tag from Tang. Joyous observance of the anniversary of your birthday read. Another one comes in, that means happy birthday of course. And then, in case you didn't know, wow, a whole three message messages in a row from Tangent. That's pretty gushy for her. Exploring your other messages, you can see gossip about Cal and Sammy. Apparently they are dating now? Whoa, you check their relationship status on their profiles. Yeah, both of them are changed to in a relationship. Your parents wake up shortly after that. And you order up your traditional birthday breakfast feast. Your dad gives you a big squeezy hug and tells you he's proud of you. Well, done. Early quiet. Ooh, mom. Your mom and dad are taking midday break in the shades of trellis and wave you over as you approach. Scamo, Scamo, come over here. Your dad caught says, pulling up a crate with his foot and patting the top invitingly. Come spend some time with your old mom and pop. How's, how's the day been? Extra solidly spectacular. A fearless explorer. Your mom draws, drawing a swing off from her canteen. She wipes her mouth with the back of her hand and passes the canteen to your, your dad. Made friends with any life on yet? Your face goes on a journey. Friends with what? Do they know about Sim? How could they? Your parents chuckle at your expression. Well, Skamu, your dad says, You know, like the little hoppers that sneak in or a blip bug. Oh, those kind of aliens. I thought for sure they were asking about Sim, but hey, what they're asking? Well, just one alien named Sim. You tell them you met an alien, a smart one with two legs, two arms, and a humanish face. You had a conversation with him. He looks like human. Your parents exchange dubious looks. We've already checked it out, your dad says. There's no alien civili- Are you fucking dumb? Like, we- Did surveys told you that? About, you know, we did went to the, um, uh, you know, survey just now? In the bell- in the ridge? Don't you think they would have contacted us if there was? Your mom snorts. Maybe they're scared of us. She pats your leg patronizingly. This is like the dream dream thing, right? You dreamt you met an alien like you used to when you were younger. I know you always said you had trouble trouble telling imagination from reality, but don't you think you're getting too old for it? I can prove it. Your mom frowns. No, you can't because there's no sense of life on this planet. We checked before we left the Earth because we didn't want to make the same mistake. Oh my god. Trust me!
okay like we keep on getting delusion because like they don't trust us i feel like if we kept we get to prove it then all the delusion cards will turn into you know something useful yeah that cuts her off and that's it for our break time back to work blue your mom scoffs and tight tidy up the crate they give you a hug and tell you to work hard out there Yeah, trust me. Yeah, but he wants heads up. Uh, okay, let's check. Nomi, nomi. Well, I'm gonna go for nomi, nomi if things fail. Wait, who's that? Oh, Mars. Tell me beans when she sees you. Like there's nothing better in the world than the sight of her face. Happy birthday, Scamma, she exclaims. She comes in for an her annual birthday hug, throwing her arms around you and giving you a great big squeeze. Here, I got this. Mm. She steps back and reaches into one of the many deep pockets of her dress, producing a little paper box. I made you this, she laughs. Opening it to reveal a little snack sized cake. You take a bite. Ah. Uh... Okay, this one happened last year as well. Share with Tommy, and then later she take out. She have another one. Thanks, Tammy. Mm. Want to study together? Tang is talking outside the lab, though it's hard to tell given her usual demeanor. I'm not allowed to work a triple shift. She mutters. That's because everyone else is a weakling who requires sleep. It doesn't mean I should be held to the same standard. Study together. You offer to help Tangent with her schoolwork, but she just shrugs you off. I'm not working on school anymore, she says. Chief Engineer instead says I'm smart for my age, and my talents are wasted in school. She opens a hollow palm and shows you some of her lab notes. Ugh, so much work though, she complains. Honestly, maybe I would be better to be like everyone else. Unintelligent people seem happier. Just then, an enemy jogs by a, with a squad of soldiers, all marching in time. She gives you a little wave, then cringes as the as, as the leader barks at her to keep her eyes forward. Thanks, Charles. On second thought, forget I said that. I'll keep being smart, thank you. Uh, research coming 80. 52. Okay, nothing. Okay, let's go for two the children. Three reasoning, one empathy, one friendship with Nomi Nomi. You're helping Tammy brush up on her math and chemistry. Auntie Seedon said that I need to me to measure when I'm baking. She says staring timidly at her at her hands, but when I'm baking, I just go by what the dough feels or looks looks or smells. It always works out. When I try to measure and think too hard, I get it wrong. She tugs on her ear. She told me that if I want to do it by feel, then I need to get better at chemistry too. She showed me this long textbook about food chemistry and how proteins combine to form gluten and how acid makes things fluffy and soft. She blinks. I didn't know any of that. Aren't acids bad? Why would I put them in my food? Go easy on her. She never learned if she isn't enjoying it. You gently encourage Tammy as as you read through the food chemistry textbook together and work on some practice tests. Even when she gets every question wrong, probably she will never be a chemistry whiz like Tang. She blossoms with every compliment, slowly gaining confidence in her ability. This isn't as scary as I thought it would be, she says, as she closes her whole palm. Thanks, Kamo. Tammy confident. When the lesson is over, Tammy insists she bake you a cake to show you what she's learning. She didn't really understand the lesson, but she has the confidence to taste uh, to taste it as she goes and adjust the recipe based on gut feeling. Not informed by some solid book learning. Did she le really learn about math or chemistry? Maybe not, but she's a better baker now. And that was her goal. She happily gives you a piece of uh, a piece in thanks for being such a good teacher. It's not bad, but you sh you aren't sure if she should be thanked to you. Tutoring.
Oh, look at this. Huh. I don't have enough. Nah, just push through. Does five reasoning? One empathy. Mid quiet next month. I think I'll go for the second perk. Then after that, I'll go for some engineering. And as usual, let's go around and check. I'm planning to go out again in um. Uh, this is pollen. This is dust, right? I'll go out in dust so that I'll go up in dust because like I want to gather some marsh marsh log wood. Oh, this have an event. Okay, you and this are sitting on the tailgate of of one of the expedition vehicles, shelling bobber bobber seeds with your teeth and spinning the hard bits on the ground. Now and then. One of you points out something funny, a passing surveyor does, or spots something under the marsh trees. This is the easiest way to talk to this, by not talking at all. This has always been like this, being isolated from the other kids has made you thoughtful. Out of everyone, you think this might understand about him, and be able to keep it a secret. Do you tell him? Trust him. You tell this that you saw something interesting when you were out on expedition. This perks up immediately and turning to you. Yeah? He asks. What? I met an alien. His jaw drops and his face goes an interesting color. You're ready for a moment, but that he's going to be upset with you and for teasing him, but no way this hit the lenient. But I met an alien too, Scamo. What was your like? Um Like us, but an alien? You describe him his long dark hair, his big eyes, his faintly purple skin. The way he never seems to answer any of your questions. This stares at your face. Wait, you met Sim too? You're not, and this this is hands fly to his hair. He said he met another human boy, but he didn't say who it was. It was you this whole time. He made me swear I wouldn't tell anyone else. This says earnestly. It's a weird expression on him. He said if other humans find out about the gardeners, you'll be in a lot of danger. So we can talk about Sim, but we have to keep it a secret. So the Western Ridge ruins? Yeah, I'm sure the gardeners are related to those ruins somehow. He shake his head. I asked him if the gardeners built that what used to be there. He said the ru ruins built the gardeners. He always speak in riddles. Why hide him? This look at you who has grown a second head. Like you've grown a second head? I don't know about you, he mutters. I'm done with people making fun of me for knowing the truth. He shake his head and looks out into the forest. I want to protect him, he says quietly. He's one of the only people who's ever tried to know the real me, you know? It's different for you. People like you, Scamo. He rubs his cheek. Sim is my everything. If he needs me to keep him a se in secret, I will. Okay, this will be a secret. It's not looking serious. Good. He says simply, then repeats it. Good. You go back to shelling bobber seeds in silence, watching the colony go about its business. How much are we on? 90. Not bad. And Tang as well. How old am I? 16. Uh, we'll go for another tutoring. You're heading back to the quarters at the end of the day. As you pass the mad bay, you hear shouts and scrambling from within. Several surveys have come back with serious wounds. Not the usual broken limbs and sunstroke. One of them is holding a tower to her own leg, slanting blood through from a massive animal bite. Another looks blinded from acid. It looks like chaos in there, up in mad bay. Gosh, it's a good thing you were here. Try Triaging and getting the most badly wounded into the med beds is difficult, and the other need traditional medical attention while they wait. It's hectic, stressful work, but you're able to keep head and provide assistance. Good work, Kid Scamo. Chief Engineer Instance says, You know, with how the quality's grown, I could use an assistant nurse here. Someone I can trust to take care of things when I'm working in the lab. Come back next month when and give me a hand, if you're interested. Okay.
caught the camera. Uh, okay, push through, stress. And the next one, we're gonna rest. That's why we gonna just stress out, right? 100 over 100. Okay, it's pollen now. Pollen season. Wait. Nomi nomi. Mid dust. Okay. I have a present for you. Give her that. Plus one. Ooh, nomi nomi. Nomi's in their usual spot in the last round, but by their steadily growing collection of body pillows and stuffed animals. <laughs> body pillows. <laughs> oh, seriously? Body pillow? They curl up with their arms around a giant plushy creature and seem to be scrolling listening to the movie available in the Pauline Media Archive. You okay? No, no me fault. I've been betrayed. I finished all of mate's talk to Ares and it ended on a cliffhanger. They tip over to the side, crushing their plushie through their, the chest in anguish. I didn't know that Stratosphere had left Earth before the series finished airing. Now we whined. You have every episode except the two part of the season finale. They buried their faith against the plushie. Now I'll never know how it ends, this sniper. It's just, it's not fair that we never have any new shows to watch. This isn't about the show, isn't it? Now we watch that. Eyes and and he's a big sign. Yeah, they say. Not meeting your eye. I guess it's kind of true. It just reminded me that um, they pick up a thread of their plushie. You know, they continue quietly. That um, everything ends and sometimes it's a lot sooner than you expected. When I got here, I remember looking at your huge media library and thinking, "Wow, galactic! I'm never gonna run out of things to watch." It felt like the whole world was still ahead of me ready to be discovered. A new planet, a new peop new people, a new life. Let me dig their, dig their fingers to their plushie. Now it feels like everything's just on fire all the time and everyone's always on my case about how I need to grow up. What's so bad about being innocent? Why does everything have to be so grim all the time? They wipe their eyes again, angry, and I don't get any more episode of this stupid show that, that I like. It's not fair. I get that it's hard. Nomi nods their chin wobbling as they try to keep it together. Yeah, they say. Tipping their head up to the ceiling and trying to put on a break. Wow. Thanks for getting it, Jamal. Ah, uh, guess not then. Okay. What we're supposed to do, we're supposed to level our creativity. Now that's what I think I'll be doing. But, but uh, if I end up pollen, I... I can't be, I can't do anything about it. Then maybe I'll just think of something else to do. You know, I've got a lot of flowers. Maybe I can give it to her, to Tammy. Tammy, present. Wait, wait, wait. When's Tammy's birthday? Birthday? Not sure. Uh, not this one. Not this month. Okay, why don't we rest? Well, we have to rest. Relax in the lounge. You spot this listening to music and ask what band. He shared his playlist of something he called post post punk, mid 21st century. It's kind of whiny, but it sounds nice once you get used to it. Uh, take this one off. You are woken by the buzzing of your holopalm. It's a colony wide alert, 
You rub your eyes and ponder the thickness of the air seeping into your bedroom through the open veranda door. It's an ominous but beautiful sight. The seasonal pale pink haze has turned to deep fuchsia. The skin scintillating silver sparks floating through it. The shimmer. Thankfully, you all been inoculated against the shimmer. But it looks like this is a bad year of the airborne spore. To be safe, you stay inside and seal your doors and windows slightly. You spend the time playing hollow games with your dad. After a couple of days, the pollen fog passes out an incident. Ah, uh, so this is when, you know, dad's supposed to die. But we're not gonna let it happen. You find Tammy in the common quarters. She's heavily absorbed in cleaning, balancing on a chair to dust up high up on the on the wall. You always wonder who did all the really thankless cleaning around the colony. And apparently the answer is Tammy. Tammy looks down at you as you approach and gestures to turn off her gear speak. Oh hello Tsukamo, she says, pushing her bangs off her face with a sweaty, hairy smile. She's clearly been at this for a while. I was just getting some cleaning done. Nothing like a shiny clean room to take your mind off things, right? She grimaces, then seems to remember herself and covers it up with a giggle. It feels false. Is something wrong, Tammy? What? Oh, oh no, of course not, Tammy assures you. She hops down off the chair and gives you a brief little squeeze. Gosh, that's so nice of you to ask. You fix Tammy for a look and, s and her smile falters. I mean, it's nothing, she says. I just, um... I overheard something I shouldn't have. Um, she says looking around the ground, when I was getting something from the pantry, I overheard some of the adults in the kitchen talking about how the tripped stock from the last harvest has all some um, weird mold on them, and they had to throw almost all of them. She tugs on her ear miserable, I just remembering being so hungry, and if we ever run our food again, Tammy clenches his fist in skirt, I just wish I just wish, I wish I didn't have to hear about all the bad things. Why can't things just be good all the, be good and nice and not so scary all the time? The grown-ups have things under control. Tell me not resolute. Yes, there's there's nothing I can do about it anyway. I'm not as smart as engine or as strong as an anemone, but that's okay because I'm really good at cooking and cleaning and taking care of the babies and doing all the other things a colony needs to keep running. I just want to be nice and normal, Tammy blurts out. I wish people knew that I can hear them when they talk about scary things. Tammy snaffles and gives you a brief mom. Thanks for listening. Skamo, I'm gonna go back to cleaning now, okay? You leave Tammy in the common area, continue to avoid thinking about her fears through breast cleaning. What do you say when someone like this he says, biting her lip? I know Cal is during my entire life. It's so it's so wonderful that she giggles and hides her face. We've known each other for seventeen years and I don't know how to talk to him now. Yeah, I got your present. Ah, it's not her birthday. During Fallen. We gotta find her birthday. So next month I'll give her. Maybe she's born and quiet. Uh, now... Assistant Matt B, let's see what I get. Three biology sheet empathy. Pretty good. Because I do need some empathy. But I want reasoning first, like reasoning just a little bit more. So let's go study engineering. Yeah. You help the younger students with their architecture work and by that you mean you help them scavenge a bag of random spare parts and adhesive from around the colony and challenge them to make the tallest possible uh structure tallest structure possible. When that's when that's predictably a disaster, you tell them to make a the most structurally sound one instead. Uh... Fine, get to work. Blue card. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not engineering now. Let's help out in the mad bay. At least it increased our empathy. You report your first ship as doctor, uh, Dr. Insus nursing assistant. Insus was never supposed to be the literal doctor for everyone in the colony. 
All the colony's medical needs were supposed to be covered by the MedBed, and then eventually we trained red medical professionals from the old generation. With the growing number of wounded and sick, it's pulling Insta's attention from her actual work in lab. Hence, why she needs the help. I'm a doctor, not a physician. Insta's grumbled as she swipes through her hollow palm and gives you the access to the med bay system. I can study the local xenofauna, so it stops killing us, or I can treat burns and upset tummies. I can't do both. There, she says, as as the haptic in your hollow palm falls. You should have access. Now don't bother me for anything less than a cranial bleed. It's a mad bed, not a jar of leeches. Just follow the instruction and push the right button. You need something? Ask Congruent. Congruent beams at you from her hollow mother. Can you handle that? I don't want Tang to turn like her. Like Tang, right now she's you know she's still growing up. She can. She can be more mellow than this, you know. I don't want. I don't want Tang to suffer alone. I can handle anything. That's the spirit, Congruent chirp. It's you and me, Gamu. High five. You gently bought Congruent's panel with your open palm, and that, and she laughs. There are no patients today. You're gonna brush up on your first first aid training. Every colonist gets first aid training starting in their early teens. Lungs gotta breathe, hearts gotta beat, blood gotta stay inside the body. Check. You run through quiz scenarios with Congress for a full week. CPR, elevate, uh, elevate and put pressure on wounds. Wrap, wrap broken bones. Flush eyes with water. Leave foreign objects in, uh, leave foreign objects in, and in, and be real careful with neck injuries. Fun fact: Congress informs you. In the field, in the field, your hollow palm can discharge its very all at once as a makeshift defibrillator. Defibrillator. First aid is important, but the goal is just to get the person stable long enough to bring them here to a med bed. That's where you and Doctor Insus will take over. Okay. You'll be fine. You might only be a matter of life and death. No biggie. <laughs> Way to put the pressure on me. Hmm, cards become mental blue. Five, four, five, eight. Nice. Win. Okay, biology plus two. Empathy three. Met pollen. Okay, now we're gonna give her. Tommy is working on the blocking out a colorful baby quilt. He looks up as he approaches. Do you like it? She asks. The colors are supposed to represent the five seasons of Petuna. He looks back down at and sighs. Someone will be allowed to have a baby soon. He says sadly. Give. Yeah. Flowers on my birthday? How beautiful! She gives you a gigantic hug. Wait. I'll, I'll do it later. Rex and Nomi are curled up together, his head on their lap as they watch something on Nomi's hollow palm. Nomi pauses the show and Rex grumbles deeply. He must have, have drifted off. Hi hi, Nomi says, scratching behind Rex's ear. Do you want to watch Turbo Girl Hyperjet transform with us? They're almost ready to start the OVAs. I have a present for you. She likes crystal. Okay, we have quite a number of them. Let's just give him that. Mix rainbow. Thank you so much. Uh, creativity. Give me a second. Give me a second. Maybe we can just go. More importantly, you okay? Uh, maybe we can make up a new ending. Third one. Okay, we've read through this earlier just now. I get that it's hard. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe we can change something. Maybe we can change something. Uh, 
this is about the show, isn't it? Sometimes it's the truth is hard to accept. Ah! You okay? This isn't about the show. I get it, that's hard. Okay. Let's go around. Okay, this. You spot this uh, about to head out on expedition. He's carrying a full backpack with a second one at his feet, full of surveying equipment. As he approaches, you realize he's writing in a notebook. An actual notebook with paper and everything. Ah, uh, probably like trying to keep it away from Congolins. He looks up at you as you approach and closes his notebook, slipping into the jacket pocket over his heart. Oh, hey, Tsukamu, he says. Tuck the pen behind his ear. Are, are you coming too? That's cool. Maybe we'll be posted near each other. Why are you writing? Just stuff, this says dismissively. I like writing on paper. It feels more real, you know? And it's more private than having everything on your whole farm where everyone could find it. So find it. You beg him for more details. Dips half through his nose, but he looks amused. Just stuff, he repeats. How I'm feeling, what the weather is like, and what people are doing around the colony. I like observing people. I thought you hated people. Sometimes I pretend I'm an alien, he continues, and I'm studying how people act so I can blend in. Can I see? This thinking for a second, I'm okay, he says, taking the notebook out of his pocket. He wraps an elastic that keeps it shut around a section at the back and hands it over. Just to look at the back half, it's private. You flip through the first half like this, say, smoky mundane notes about things that are going on in the colony, who's going on who's going where on expedition, what they are serving in the canteen, various snippets of gossip. There are several pages of sketches, what looks like diagram of the colony buildings and walls. You're surprised, you didn't know this would draw. Mm, Except they left you a uh, half, a uh, forbidden back half, and this shouts and tackles you fighting for control over the book. He wins eventually, but you not before you catch a glimpse of what's within the pages. Tim stares, Face stares back at you, beautiful and alien. This has a rendered him in exquisite detail. Ah. Well, I, at least we know that he. Uh, what were you writing? Can I see? This could use danger to someone. This rather than take his book back, stuffing it in his jacket pocket. He just some random notes and drawings. He says dismissively, people can have journals to come with. You're about to reply, but you're interrupted by Utopia calling for all hands on board to the expedition vehicles. This stoops and to pick up the surveying equipment. Then he's gone without another word. Done. Anything else? Guess not. Uh, maybe I'll teach another round. I'll think I'll teach. To get the organizing. I want to get the robotics, the engineer, but I'm still quite far away, you know. Okay, let's go for this. Thanks like you down uh, in the hallway. Oh, Tsukamu, do you have a moment? You go on expedition sometimes, right? She asks, at least far more than I do. Or would you ever wish to? So, would you mind doing me a favor? Of course. It's a small thing, really. And I understand I'm, it's not terribly dangerous either. Thank you, I simply need to bring some pop by egg. The next time you come across a nest out there. I would ask this, but, well, she makes an evocative dismissive gesture. I'll keep an eye for them. That's all I ask. They're quite common. If the reporters from the forages are to be, to be believed, they tell me that they are more commonly find nests in the Valley of Vertigo. It's possibly lousy with them. They are just nice because I'm planning to go there as well. Let's see, we're gonna do it like this. Five. 
Wait. Ah. I guess I have to do it like this. Wait, 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 I got an idea. Sometimes rearranging is also very important. There we go. Wait, wait, that's how we did some of... Ah, four, five, six. Okay. Cool. Okay, it's early dusk. Nomi Nomi. Nomi Nomi is mid dusk, right? Yep. Nomi Nomi mid dusk. Tammy. Present. Okay, next. Let's see. That looks pretty low. Any more? Nope, nothing. I gotta need to get some marsh log wood. Okay, there's one. We got the devil. Oh, another one. Okay, give him some marsh log wood. Shoot you a star smile. Nothing a dog likes more than a stick, right? Okay. Now, hogs incoming. Ooh. You find rags in an empty space outside the lounge, setting up a construction projector. Hold a projector and riding through the different projections of future buildings, taking notes on each. He looks up from his hollow palm as you approach and burst into a huge mouth. But hey, Skamo, what's going on? Rex picks up a uh, thumb and his chest. You're looking at the newest member of the colony construction crew. I'm surveying the colony for places to build new private family quarters. People are gonna want to raise family here soon. Isn't that, isn't that real? Families? Yeah, Rex says, beaming with excitement. Especially us seniors. We've been cooped up in a spaceship for too long. And, you know, when people get grass under their feet and fresh air in their, in their noses, he bumps his hip into yours with a whoop of laughter. They get frisky. Get ready for a baby boom. How is that going to be in demand? Besides, he continues, I think I kind of get an idea of what I want to contribute to the colony. I want to build a bar. Not a, re not a real one. Not just canteen. Nice decor, a space with for live music, cushions everywhere, fun drinks. Must have been helping out with the details, he sighs dreamily. Can you imagine it? A place where the whole point is just to relax and be with your friends? That sounds like a great idea. I think so too, Rex says, spreading his hands wide. People need leisure time. We need time to connect with other humans. We are social creatures and we need our packs. All I want to do is help people connect with each other, you know? Rex says, I love building things. I love cooking things. I love making people happy. Coming together to create something is why we are alive. We just this around. And I don't mean buildings. I mean, they're alright, but what I'm really in into is everything that goes into making a building. It's more than just walls and ceiling. It's an agreement between people that we are gonna form a society and that we're gonna cooperate to make things bigger, bigger than ourselves. And then we're gonna meet them in space. Oh, in peace. Plus 2 is press over for 50. Rex shakes his head, clearing his thoughts. Sorry, I'm just really passionate about this stuff. He laughs. This and hugs. We humans are also good at hugs. Rex rubbed his thumb across his chin, thinking, Hey, actually, can you help me? Can you bring me any mushroom stick or log you find? I want to start stockpiling them, so when I get approval to start building the bar, we're good to go. Of course I will. Rex bounces his heels and launches into a huge hug. Thank you, he explains. I really appreciate it. If you find any, just bring any... Just bring them to me. Um, let's go. We're gonna go to the valley. Because we got the uh the forage. And also if you remember, 
um, that 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 ruin over there, the um, the one where we get the the source of all the shimmering, like they say in dust, it is dust, right? That is dust. Dust is when it's very uh, the sun is at at its peak, meaning that um, it neutralizes the shimmer. Okay. You come across not just one Ricky, but a whole swarm of them. Only baby ones, just for a size of the head. They're all a mess around a huge, massive tree, tearing up and down the tree trunk. But see the tree itself under the swamp? You notice the same pale pink as the baby Ricky. His tentacle like root meander a fairly large distance before plunging into the ground. Mm. Bravery? Maybe they aren't so bad? Animals. Okay, give me a second. I think we did this before. Let's try the, the challenge. Combat. Okay, three. Well, it's 19, I didn't know. Four, five, eight, eight. Next round. Six, five, three, four, four. I think we can go for super goal, you know. Wait, I got an idea. Thirty-six. Thirty-nine. Uh, okay, fine. Win. Well, it wasn't that. wasn't so hard. You smack a couple of them to the ground, and the rest got up to the bows and hide there. You pop your chest and barely walk on. Popeye. Uh, where to catch it? We went through this before. Next. Okay, nice, all five. Two, three, three. Maybe not. Two, trap push through. Uh, I don't want to get too stressed up, you know. Push through, but then another bristle buff for the geophonic for you're getting good at this. Uh not now. Not now. Maybe you'll come back here later, okay? Maybe you'll come back here later. Oh, Sims there. Your path is blocked by a massive eight leg xenophon. Something is fighting. Uh okay, we went through this. Think through it. Another challenge. Next round. Uh, 
sampai wait okay next make everything become Okay. I don't want to stress myself out. Push through. Plenty stress. Anyone's plus two? This is a strange approach, but you've seen it work a bit. Sometimes music can soothe the, the savage beast. You even sing, you sing a lullaby, and the great beast looks at you with curiosity. Eventually, its eyes drift closed and it's Settles down, sucking its many legs underneath it. You must be too tired to begin with, like a toddler who skipped their nap, leave it. Empathy. Okay. Sam. You're walking around a trail and you're caught up by surprise. It's Sam, and he's running. You're knocked to the side as he pushes past you, running in the opposite direction with barely a glance. You shot and chase after him, but after a few seconds, it becomes clear where you don't have a hope of finding Sim when he doesn't want to be found. You turn and continue to uh, along the path, and around the, the next bend, you find a familiar face. Utopia. She's collecting rock samples with a pickaxe, like an old timey prospector. Who the hell was that? She demands. Um, it's just an alien named Sim. Utopia screams at you at a trademark rough humor. An alien, eh? Is this some kind of role playing thing? She hides her pickaxe and off her shoulder. Whatever, just watch where you're running, okay? The gavel's loose around here. You agree, happy to be out of this composition without any trouble, and continues along the path before Utopia asks any more questions. She walks a couple minutes to see Sim again. He seems to be in good humor despite the close call. Oh, he says, leaning against the tree. It is tiresome to be so secretive. He up his eyes, brimming with mirth. It's such a pleasure to be around you and this, and to not have to hide myself. He sobers quickly. It would be best if you exercise discretion though, he says. It's not the time right for the gardener to be formally introduced. To do so too to do so too early will cause great degree of chaos. Yes, even the female surveyor. He continues. I do like her, but I have learned my limited experience with your kind that adults of your species do not react well to surprises. It is it is great that you're here though, Sim continues, as I do need something from you. Data. What? Tim holds up his hand. Please do not be alarmed, he says, placatingly. I do not mean sensitive information as your personal and defenses. I mean only the content of the digital culture archive, like follow bits. Sim smiles. Yes, exactly. Your holographic recordings of movies, music, movies, music, books, and cultural artifact only. I promise. Why? Well, Sim says. Isn't it obvious? I wish to know more of your kind. I wish you learn how to. He struggles for the right phrasing. I wish you learn how to act in such a way that it's not so disc discomfitting to humans. I'll do it. Sim Jan Sim's gentle smile grows warmer. Truly? Really? He asks, clasping his hand. Oh, I thought it would take a great more deal more convincing. You're surprising. It's such a pleasure. You tell Sim that you can let me find a mem drive in engineering and fill it with the data at once. But you have a few questions on your own. That's fair. It must be frustrating to feel as though the truth is being withheld from you. The ignorance is not a yoke of your kind bears easily. Please trust me when I say that my inability to answer your question is one of circumstances beyond my control. And not a not a lack of desire on my part, he continues. I have full faith that you will know everything soon enough. Um, you come across a curious sponge like hive, pockmarked with holes containing wriggly grubs and oozing sweet smelling syrup. A top of the hive appears to be hive cream, looking like. Oh, wait, her swollen abdomen is, is the hive. She's rooted here, probably drawing nutrients from the from the soil like a plant while she tends to her lava. If you appear mentioned these, these are squee digger hives. Watch closely, quietly. It's absolutely fascinating. The squeaky girl high queen cooes to her children, who skitter in and out of her holes on her surface. You can kind of see where her eyes are used to be, but now it's more mild and creature. She still breathes, but it's only what she can absorb from her legs, which have become weak. The lava children pinch her when they are hungry. She groans, clenches, and out of the hole oozes her sweet stunning jelly. Mm -hmm. okay. 
let's try and sneak up and harvest. Like this. Okay. The compound screen has only rudimentary danger sense. Squeed eagle hives can be very defensive when they sense danger to their young, but so long as you don't set off the workers or, or the larva, you're free to walk right up to her. You gently avoid hurting any of the babies as you scrape her canopias, hope you're sunny into the collector. Uh oh, I'm very stressed out right now. Uh, follow it. Track it. I might redo this, okay? I might redo this. Hmm. Oh man, this is bad. Next round. Okay, make this go wild. Eight. Eight. Uh, I don't want to use much log wood. Give me a card. Thank you. Okay, win. They're looking for a person. It's surprised when you come face to face with a weird looking creature. It kind of looks like a person. More like a tree really. Some relative of a bush bub, but more like me. Tentacle and slime. Like a tree oozing with goopy sap. The two legs. Yup. It makes a sort of baru noise at you and you step back. Mm, nah. We're gonna find events that like actually make us. They will make us. Uh, how should I say this? Uh, relax. No! Go. Can move past it. Blue bubble fruit. Valley of Origo. Cluster of mushroom. Eat one and see. Okay, not this. We'll do this later. We'll do this later. Bubble fruit. What's this? They come up to a lot. Three. Uh, take it. Uh, we'll come back, we'll come back. Like I say, we really need to reduce our stress. Quite a lot of stuff. We're really stressed out. And I don't want to come here a second time. You find a healthy black bush and harvest some of the leaves to bring back to the colony. Utopia's beyond excited when she sees you. Oh, black! She cries. Shoving your hands right into the basket of rusting leaves. Skamu, you're a boy after my heart, my own heart. Okay, this one we went through last time. The chew. Okay, now we can go back. Let's go to the mushroom first. Identify the mushroom.
I don't think it's four. Four. I think this is good. Next. Draw a card. Nothing. Draw a card. One more. Okay, fine. I'll go for it. Next round. I'll definitely use the red one now. Win. Let's do biology. You're able to determine that this mushroom are edible. You fill your basket with a big chunk of fungus. You drop out with will be please your hall. Great work. Um just five kudos, eh? I thought like Let's let's go for the Manticore event. Take it. Fight the Manticore. I want combat. Sixty. Next round. Huh, this is gonna be hard. I might need to use the Dino egg. Take it out. Wait. Eighty. Dang, it's hard. Hey, give me a second. Give me a second. We'll we'll leave this first. We'll leave this first. That's why I want to get empathy to to sixty six because empathy sixty six will will unlock your second perk, which is whenever you rest, you can you can uh you can discard three, and basically I'm gonna discard anything that is below three. Anything that is below three, um, well hopefully everything will be up at four. Just since we can fight, I'll take it. I want to increase my combat. Heart becomes free. Three. What if like this? No point. Ask me. Maybe you want to use much rock wood, which is why I should. Plastic. Okay, next. Card becomes tree. For this value. Give up. Do yeah, whatever. For truth and stress. Kudos in combat. You chase the rookie off. 
and claim ownership of the dead animal. Ah, uh, it's gonna it increase biology, but I want you know combat. Okay, goodbye. Anything? It's right to check. We're in here, way out of here. Nothing. Not worth it. Ooh, a mantic bar. I bet it's not gonna be easy. Wait, where's my cursor? Find another way. Ooh, Hopeye. You spot a Hopeye in there, just like Tangent asked you to find. There are 9 inks inside. All packaged up in what looks like a delicate spun glass cocoon. You see the parents steal some egg. You break a little hole in the cocoon and put 3 of the eggs in your bag. They are all gooey. You hope they don't break. Um, we turn to leave and come face to face with an adult Hopeye. Understandly, it looks spitting red. Hey! Different color. It drums its powerful foot up to the ground in warning and four more pops out of all the other girls and start hissing at you. You should have known these sociable little creatures raise their young community. Use animal psychology. You learn from the Holopedia that two different sets of follow of eyes of on Hopeye have different purposes. The large bulging ones on top are hardwired for perceiving danger, but the small forward facing ones are more concerned about finding food. If you're not if you're not food and you are not and you're not danger, you throw yourself onto your belly and wriggle away while the hot bites stare at you curiously. When you're safe, when you're at a safe distance, they return to poking at their violated nest in confusion. Ah, uh, okay, danger. Ah, uh, so like, they can only perceive danger or food. If not, they are lost. Ah. Uh... Let's go around. Maybe we'll see what this is. Climb up to it. Uh, nothing. Ah. Ah. This is bad. Valley of Vertigo. What's this? Uh, body dandy. How gorgeous flowers. Okay, never mind. Maybe I'll just. I wonder what we'll get for finding that, you know? For finding this. Take it. We're gonna go for toughness challenge. Okay, max fifty six thirty five. Five, four, uh, take it out, take it out, take it out. Forty five. Okay, on second thought, crystal cluster. Toughness. Four, three, five, zero. Sixty stress. Even worse than just now.
Let's see what we'll, what we'll get. Done. Remember expeditions, thanks. Zeno egg. Ah, it's just Zeno you know, egg. Just leave it. Okay, never mind. Let's go for the boss event, and we'll we'll head back. Let's head back. The Valley of Vertigo spans a huge and relative safe area, so it's rare to see other forages out here. It's surprising then to come across Utopia with two other forager, uh, forages crouching in the underbrush. Utopia hit this. Backing you, you over? Get over here. The thing over to the other forages, through a gap in the underbrush, you spot the terrific sight of a fully grown manticore that's fallen into a mess of at least 20 snap ladders and are engaged in what looks like a battle to the death. I've got 10 kudos on the snap ladders, he says. I fell into a nest once, I was laid up in a bad day for weeks. Poor Manticore. One of the other forgers say, what a way to go. The last forger is not. Those snap ladders don't have a chance. I'll take 10 on the Manticore. The Manticore roars in pain as it torn away, uh, popped by the whip fast. Hungry snap ladders. Help the Manticore! Crazy idiot. Yeah. Draw. Hard yet plus two. Draw. We use this. Next thirty. At the end here. Wait, what was it? Okay, when victorious, that's three animals. We ever tried to stop you as you as you burst through the underbrush, dedicating yourself to being the best distraction your weak, fragile human body can be. Enough of the step that just turn their focus. On you that the manticore is easily able to pick off uh, others off. Crunch, munch, snap. Off, off go enough hits in the manticore's powerful jaws that the survivor cut their losses, disappearing back into the burrow. Now you find yourself face to face with the manticore, but you're not perfect murder machine. It looks at you quizzically. You look back, you feel a weird connection to this creature. Suddenly the manticore roars, lunging at you, lashing its green mane. Why be? You scream in terror and get the hell away. Luckily, the manticore is too wounded, or uh, too too wounded to bother chasing you. You and the other four just make away without, uh, without any injury. Keep exploring. They seem we need to find a second relay, you know. Vatumnalia. It's Vatumnalia. Everyone in high spirits as they decorate the colony square. The great tables are piled high with food, groaning under the weight of heaps of roasted and steamed vegetables, barbecued meat, stews. Carafes and pulled up cider, and cafe dripping with frost, frosting sugar box syrup. You gather in the colony square for the usual speeches. Okay, this one, I think we don't need to read it. We went through this last time. Happy Vatruna, this is a present for you on the table. XOXO, the secret admirer. You have a secret admirer? You unwrap a present, you snap it to your wrist and boot it onto a horror farm. It's full of all your favorite songs, videos, shows, and games. A collection created by someone who must really know you. Rise and fall a sanctuary moon. Okay, this is Tang. Trivia. You're not going to have any pop culture question this year, right? Tang is soft. Her voice dripping with disdain. I just don't see the point. Why are we celebrating real intelligence? Luckily, Nomi doesn't overhear this. If they do, they don't care. They're just happy to be here. First collectible is free. Next round.
Ooh. Not bad. Nice to see. Next round. Um, I don't think this is good. So let's re re go. Okay. Dissecting a sugar bug. Wait. Cool. Can't. Bubble fruit. Uh, Fifty-five. Should I use a mushroom wood? I think I should. Maybe I shouldn't. How many do I have? Three. Fine. We don't have enough. Ah, fuck. Nuts. What should I do now? Oh boy. Here's the. Okay, I think I need to redo. Wait, if I want to redo, give me a second. If I want to redo, let's check out our gear. Flushes. I'll put the sun medallion. Help the manticore. Draw. Five one five. This. Okay. Next. We'll leave this for later. Four. Four. Ah, uh, it's unchangeable. Okay. Next round. Win. We could have got a super win though. Done. Next, go home. We're at almost at max press, but I can't even use it anyway. Trivia. Maybe... Okay, this is good. Next. Eight. Four. Four. Okay, next round. Forty-three. Can I get it? Ten. Okay, good. All of your hours spent watching Hollow Bits really paid off. You nailed the pop culture question and about half of the science and humanity as one as well. Nomi and Tangent are too specialized to beat you, previous star. After the festivities, everyone descends on the feast. You heat your plate with more food than you could eat in three sittings. 
when all the food is gone and the sunset has broken uh, the heat of the day, people break out the instruments and one dances well into the night. Done. What is it, Cal? Uh, no, no, this is not. Tang is my secret admirer. Where's Tang? Tang! My secret admirer. Are you my secret admirer? Well, of course not. I would never. The whole idea is I'm simply too busy. It's okay, I won't tell. <sighs> Dang, not and finally meet your eye. Good, he said. I don't want to make a big deal about it. Going for a smooch. Ah. Are you my secret admirer? I won't tell. Let the moment pass. Okay, it's your birthday. So let's give her this. A happy birthday to me. Nomi Nomi. Let's look at Nomi Nomi. 38. Nomi Nomi is at 38 now. Okay, I already gave her. What should I do now? I think I'll go with... We need to work, okay? I think that going to Signal Botany is the best. Biology Organizing. Back in the lab, you have all the right equipment to properly examine that radioactive plant you found. Maybe you can find a way to protect yourself from them so you don't need to drag a radiation proof and virus suit with, with you every time you go to that part of the planet. The radiation poison isn't the killer like uh, it used to be on Earth. With mad beds, you can flush out deadly doses of radiation in a few hours. You can still make you really sick though. And high enough doses could kill you before you're even able to reach the mad bed. How confident are you that you know how to protect yourself? Super confident, no problem. Yeah, you totally got a, work, a handle on this. You're an engineering wonder kind. You take all the correct precautions and clear the area of anything that might be contaminated. You wear radiation proof hair suits and regularly check the radiation levels of the lab and your congruent standby uh, to call for help if needed. Everything goes smoothly. You discovered that the radio part, radioactive part, okay this part, I think we've read through it last time. Plus one. Win. Biology. You find tangent in engineering and set set down the back of squashy, goopy, hop I egg. The eyes go wide. You found them! He exclaimed. That's wonderful. It was big I was beginning to think you've forgotten all about my request. He reaches for the egg but stops. Wait, what is that sound? Are they They are! You hear a wet cracking sound coming from the bag. You're about to witness a miracle of life, but two minutes out, what do you do? Analyze the process. You pull out your hollow part and prepare to take notes. Why miss this opportunity? You and Tang watch in wonder as a gel like shell of the largest hop eye egg flips like a ripe melon in the sun. Filling out a tiny squirming pink baby and a small puddle of amniotic fluid. You watch the last two eggs intently, but through this, clear egg shells, you can't see any movement inside at all. Not even a heartbeat. It's okay, Tang says. We only need one. The tiny hot bite is on its feet. Well, food within minute, minutes. Taking cautious little hops on the sleek surface of the lab bench. Magnificent, Tang says. Keeping the palm sized hot bite from falling off the table. I expected them to be helpless at first. Like kittens or birds. Not already moving around like, like an ungulate. Incredible. I can't wait to study it. It's yours. Okay. Kudos. Help tangent. Perfect, Tang says. Let me get a specimen container for it. She leaves you with the tiny clumsy thing, which chirps and blinks up at you unevenly with its four eyes. 
well, whatever Tang and Dr. Instance are going to do with it is probably for the greater good of the colony. Next month. Okay, we're still in dust. Yeah, there's nothing. Maybe we can go on to the Xenobotany and do again and see if if there's any more events. The important part is to trigger the events. If there's nothing, we're gonna go and tutor. Here's the way to only farm Black Red shortly after the colony landed on Matuna. Ah, uh, this one. Give it the tangent. Neighbors become sensing on humans. Help tangent. Yep. I will always help tangent. Uh, uh, I'm cutting you off. So this one, I remember, like she, she can get addicted to it. Lassoing float town. Uh, I think it's better for us to redraw. Wait. Super goal. Next month. A wet season. I guess we don't need them anymore. Nomi nomi. Well, it's not her birthday this, this season. Okay, next. We still have another month. Oh! Give her. Done. Next one. I'm not sure whether to. Maybe we're gonna go for Xenobotany again because it really like double our kudos and I'm already at max. I think I need to buy some stuff. Or better yet, remove. Visit the spa. Move the one. Is there any more ones? Okay, this one. Forget. First step, yes. Okay, take this Eagle Eyes one. Eagle Eyes two. Forget it. Okay, we're done. Oh yeah, biology. What are you working on? Radioactive plant. Xenobotany. Okay, this this there's no event. Let's go and tutor. Oh yeah, I forgot to give Rex. Um, okay, tooling is big for you. I was on a roll. Do you need something? Sure. Log. Rex construction project. Rex beams a ha happiness as you hand over the mushroom. What really? I need this for building the bar. Thank you so much. I think a dog likes more than a stick, right? Okay. Tugs incoming.
download data for SIM. SIM asks you for data on human cultures, television, shows, music books, music books, things like that. You have unlimited access to a congruous media archive through your whole farm, but for SIM, it will be a little bit more complicated. You need to find a physical storage unit that will, uh, with enough memory to contain a chunk of the whole archive. Ask Professor Hell for one. Physical storage media, eh? We don't use many of those, do we? He chuckles. Most everything is networked. He's happy to help, so and tells you to come with, uh, to get with him to his workshop where he repairs his robots. He starts rummaging around in a desk, then another desk, then a foot locker and a cabinet. He sticks uh, his tongue to his teeth and he wriggles his arm all the way to the back of the set of drawers. What do you need it for? Your ball part on the fritz? I can take a look at it for you. Lie. The are definitely going to back up some special photos and, and bits on it, just in case the fallen net goes down. Tal looks guiltily at Congress Wonder, which is currently dark. Yeah, I don't like to think about it, but the old girl's gonna break down eventually, he says quietly, that she can hear. Not long, not for a long while. Yeah, probably not until you get, uh, you got grandbabies. But when she goes, no one's know how to fix her, even I couldn't. I'm not ready to say goodbye yet, he continues, not by a long shot. Which is why I keep the robots going too, even the ones we, that were antique when we left the earth. He hands you a tiny cylinder with the tiniest the size of your pinky finger. Well, here it is. You can plug it in here and copy whatever you need from the HoloNet onto it. I'll leave you onto it. You start by carefully copying your favorite bits and games, then realize there's a shit ton of more room on this tiny device. You sweep several thousand more bits as well as the entire contents of the school's learning PDF. That should be enough, well, for a lifetime. You pull out the unit and admire it. It has a tiny projector at one end of the with a gesture sensor, just like your whole palm. Okay, we got a Twitter children. Because we wanna get the reason, okay? Today you're tutoring Nougat and a couple of younger kids in ancient ge geography. They are learning the names of the countries by pointing the to them on maps and seeing a few facts about them. It seems kind of pointless to memorize places that these kids will never see, but it's not like you can teach them much about Bachelorian geography yet. They're still discovering it. Billions of people, Nugget says, skeptically squinting at a whole projection of Earth. How do they fit everybody onto one little planet with all trees and animals and stuff? Was it all like a big colony? Learning about Earth too. Can I heard the sad truth. We gave Nugget the little kid version of the truth that you learned as a kid. We tell her that life on Earth was brutal and hard. Humanity destroyed the environment and fought over what was left. There were no trees and animals left, not as many as there should have been anyway. Most of the people were hungry, sick, poor, hungry and sick. And the ones who weren't kept all the thing, nice things for themselves. At least your parents were lucky to escape on the stratospheric and you were lucky to be born on it. You are all lucky to be here. No matter what, at least Matumna is an Earth. Nougat looks bewildered. She doesn't really watch Hollow bit, only the cheerful ones for kids that don't address Earth decline, so she has no idea. Okay, okay. So in other words, that is wrong. So we have to let's lie to her. There's no point in crushing Nougat's optimistic view of humanity. Like all children, she knows that your parents left her because they were unhappy and wanted to live on Matuna. There's plenty of time to learn the truth later. You weave a story about people living in harmony with nature, plant tre planting trees on their skyscrapers and grass boulevards where you where they used to be daily work. You figure some people probably did do that. Maybe the wealthy ones who weren't fighting all the time. You get do those drawings of cities with grass growing on the roads. You had to correct her. Grass was greener on earth, not purple. Okay, Sam. Okay, good. This. We want to use this, okay? Plus one skill. Mid wet. Auto fairy perk.
Bravery. If you ask me, we should go for engineering now. Reason why? It's because like engineering, like helping with the robotics, it's gonna help you uh, improve creativity. In other words, that helps with um, helps with um, nomi nomi. You're walking through the colony and you see a blur of color and motion at the corner of your vision. Bang! Colony collides with a catastrophe of flailing limbs and high pitched squealing, sending you both falling to the ground. Oh my gosh! Nomi exclaimed. They immediately get to their hands and knees and begin to collect the papers that exploded out of their hand when they fell. I'm so 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 sorry. Sometimes my brain is off doing its own thing and I don't watch where I'm running. Ah! They exclaimed, dusting off their piece of toast and shoving it back in their mouth. Ah, oh, come on! The o- Ah, <laughs> uh, the girl manga. Gotta 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 eat breakfast when you're- even when you're late. Don't even worry about it. Nomi giggles and continues to collect their scattered papers. Their face is bright red. Okay, if you say so. Thanks, Kamu. Maybe if I had a genetic answer like everyone else, I would be able to watch where I'm going. Okay, this one they talk about the parents um, hiding her genetic uh, augment, if she have any. That's really smart. Okay, we're gonna continue. You don't suck at looking stellar hot. Uh, you sound like Rex, they laugh, and give you a little push on the arm. Mm, so she's not that happy about that. Every single point counts, okay? That's really smart. Everyone sucks at first. It's the first step of to being kind of good at something. Let me say sprightly. That's from a show I used to watch. And I guess I don't suck at everything. They strike a pose with an imaging laser pistol. I'm really good at laser people. Pew pew! Okay. She had a crush on Greg, but I want her to change that to me, you know. Engineering? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Do I have something that can improve on engineering? Uh, I guess not. Give me a second. Let's double check. Engineering. Supply Depot. Nope. No engineering. Need rebellion less than 20. 25. Wow, that's amazing. Talking about working on Depot again. Friendship with 10. Rebellion less than 20. I'll try and not to rebel so much. I guess we have to level it up the old fashioned way by going to class, study engineering. Okay, six. Wait. Win. Just like everyone else in the colony, you get routine physical. Not only you are a growing man, but it's important to monitor how the bituminous environment affects human psychology. Doctor instance take all sorts of scans and collect skins, hair, and blood samples. As you're sucking on a soy sweet as a reward for being brave, you look through your file, size, and closing holes screen to look at you. There's one more thing we need to talk about. 
Princess isn't the most comforting person in the colony, but you come to find her nonsense bedside manner somewhat reassuring. If there's something wrong, you know she won't talk about around it forever. I've heard that you've been experiencing a delusional thought, it says carefully, believing that you have seen or done things in past life or that you can foretell the future. Your parents entered the mad bay, looking concerned. I'm sorry to spring this on you, Pumpkin, your dad said, but we are all worried about you. It's okay to make to play make-believe, but if you really believe what you're saying, there might be something wrong. You might be sick, really, really sick. He walks over and puts his hand over your shoulder. I just worry you put yourself in danger believing something that's not real. There may be simple explanation why you're experiencing this delusion. Insta says, schizophrenia, early onset of Alzheimer's disease, obsessive compulsive disorder, or even a brain tumor, or some other physical trauma. For your health, I think I it will be best to move into the med bay for observation. It's all real, I'm not sick. Instant sighs again. That you can't see that you can't see er, you're sick is really the most concerning symptom of all. She opens her hollow screen and enters a few notes. I've revoked permission for you to attend work or school for at least a month, says Doctor's order. Fine, I'll go. You have moved into the med bay for round the clock observation. The new quarters aren't that different from uh, than the family suite that you grew up, just smaller and less familiar. You're free to watch a hollow bit and study as much as you like in your downtime. There's a lot of downtime. It's hard to adjust and enforce rest at first. You offer antipsychotic medication, but because you haven't shown any signs of endangering yourself, uh, endangering yourself or others, it's your choice. Refuse the med. Unfortunately, the colony doesn't have a dedicated counselor. This and thank mother, Bess, was a trained psychiatrist, but she died when you were little. And since then, there's only been Congress AI therapy. You attend, ther attend therapy every day, which consists of talking to congruence and doing exercises to help your, you express your emotions. Her therapy module is surprisingly robust. If your problem was simply high stress or trauma, you're sure you would have helped. Congress doesn't really know how to respond to your insistence that you've lived this before. She offers you tips on med meditation, which she says some human culture believe could help to explore the concept of one's past life and how they can affect the present. If nothing else, you spend a lot of time examining your thoughts and where you fit into the colony. It's awkward at first, but you soon you come to appreciate that everyone is so hopeful for your recovery, even if you don't need one. A month passes. After a month, you feel better rested than you have in a while. If nothing else, having a month off of all responsibility has eased off your stress. You move back to your quarters, it feels good to be home. Instant is pleased with your recovery, even though you don't feel any different. All you learn is that acting on your visions bring you unwanted attention. If you keep worrying people, you're going to be checked into the mad bay, whether you want it or not. Okay, close season. Where's Tammy? Well, Tammy's hiding for sure. Now, where should I go now? Well, engineering, of course. Okay, this is the last one. Then we can. Done. The lying in bed staring in a wormhole through your window when you heard deep thump resonate through the ground. The second one is quieter. The woven roof of your room quivers, unleashing a season's world of fine glowing dust to sift through the air. Through your open window, you hear voice sounding the alarm. The annual offensive is here and leading the charge are two massive faces during the fray. Okay, this one... Basically, he's gonna blow them up. So to stay out of the way. Heart becomes four. Ooh. That's bad.
Wait, 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 wait. I skipped one. Damn it. One study engineering. Okay, nine, nine, two, one, like this. Win. Okay, join in the fray. Perception challenge. Five, five. Next round. Six, four, um, wait, how about like this? All fours, nice. Part become four. Four, four, four. Wait. Okay, win. I got out of the way. Okay, basically they blow themselves up. Fortunately, we lost two defenses. Start H17. Tang! You spot Tang heading behind the engineering wing. Follow Ollie to find that she's disappeared. Then you look up. See an access ladder leading to the maintenance platform. Okay, here is where we can romance her. Uh, are you okay? I know how to take your mind off things. Tang no shrimp goes. Wait, you can't seriously mean, he says, then laughs. Maybe another time. I appreciate the thought, but I can't imagine a romantic antagonist right now. Not with everything going on. But I'm not looking for romance. Initially, this proposal, Tang says thoughtfully, did you get the idea from rumors about me and Mars? Tang sits up and slips her coat off her shoulders. Orgasm reduces endorphins. Uh, they can provide temporary relief from the symptoms of depression, he says, then tips her head at you with cheeky smile, not to put any pressure on you to perform of course, simply put, I could use the distraction. Releasing and often. No, I don't want you to do it like this. Blinks at you. You like me? He leans away from you, eyebrows furring. I'm sorry, he says. I don't think I feel the same. Well, I mean, I would have to think about it. Can you tell me what's going on? I don't think so, he says. Maybe, will you sit with me? You lie down beside Tang and watch the gentle revolution of the sky for a few minutes. You can feel the caginess seep out of Tang's as you lie there in silence until she finally speaks up. Do you ever think about humanity? She asks slowly. Humans are such glorious, beautiful, ugly, self destructive things, she continues. They only ever create by destroying, and in turn, they hasten their own demise. Tang finally looks at you, her hollow eye lighting up her cheekbones. He looks gone. It was the, hum was the belief in human supremacy and unchecked innovation that doomed humankind on Earth. Does it seem that we're going the same path here on Materia? I believe we can do better here. Uh... That's not helping Tang. Are you okay? He take your mind off things. I don't want to do it like this. Tell me what's going on. So what if we are? This is our home. Tang brought for us. It is our home, he repeats. You're right. We can change that. And we shouldn't have to apologize wanting to live here. Just like anything else that does. Sometimes I wonder he continues and pauses. Sometimes I wonder why we even send humans to explore space. Given our track record, you would think perhaps an artificial intelligence would have been easier. 
No ego to get in the way. No questions or ethics or morality. Morality. After all, we learned in Earth history that when a human colonist travel from Earth to, to the Americas, they nearly kill everyone who have lived there because they spread disease. Tang looks at her hands. I just can't help but wonder if you're doing the right thing. The head to the laboratory plank open. Okay, probably this is when she, you know, the, the genocide happens. You know, like she, she's researching it. Reasoning. Auto ferry. The heroic. Ooh. Um. Okay, he's hot. Okay, take your shirt off in solidarity. He must have found ways to have fun. Yeah, had no me, he says. We will misfits together no matter what. We always have each other. That's your present. And so. Hugs incoming. No me! Give her the crystal cluster. Let's see. 45. Well, we're halfway. And we still have around 3 to 4 years to go. Ah, a mushroom wood. I needed that. We gotta give Tammy. Wait, Tammy's birthday is in Fallen, right? Late Fallen. Tammy stands. Uh. Okay. Yellow flower. Ooh. Tammy looks worried. She's hugging herself and facing around. Every now and then, her attention turns sharply towards the east wall. Are you okay, Tammy? She relieved to see you. There's something out there, she says in a quiet voice. Lots of something outside the walls. I think they are far away, but I can hear them. What do they sound like? It's like... She struggles to describe the sound. Squeaking. Super high pitch. Really long sound, like metal or broken robobag scraping along the floor. Only there are hundreds of them. You shudder at the thought. Yeah. My dad said he picked these ears as my augmentation to keep me safe. He sniffed. But all they do is make me scared. I hate my stupid ears. He bats at them uh, with her fist. Here. Tears spring to her eyes. It's okay to be scared. She gives you a long searching look. My dad always says being scared is an opportunity to do something brave, but... You are lucky to have such cool ears. You really think so? She leans, uh, she lets you lean in close for a close, for a good look at her enormous elf like ears. You wonder what's it like to be, uh, it must be like to have such sensitive hearing. Can she hear the grass growing? Can you, she hear you, your heartbeat? I have an idea. That makes confidence. You ask if you considered noise casting sound. The sub, subdermal jawbone conducting Hear speak for her, Holofon could calibrate it to dampen or block out certain frequencies. It takes a moment to pause what you think. Oh, I never thought about that. I'll try it. I wonder if, I, if I'll still feel like me without my special hearing. Yeah, then it tells her that her amazing hearing could be a great garrison to look out. Or a musician. Or a spy. He looks at you dubiously. I, I don't think I want to be any of those things. But thank you, he smiles. You're a good friend, Scamo. Please don't let my dad know I said I didn't like my ears, she says. Tammy is such a caring girl. It's unfair she has to suffer from her sensitive hearing, but so sweet she doesn't want to burden anyone. She gives you a big warm hug and says she's going to head inside soon because it's nice and quiet in there. You leave her rubbing, you leave her rubbing one of her ears thoughtfully. Upgraded memory, Tammy's care too. Okay. 
I think I can apply for engineering. Wait, what time is it now? Oh, it's already 12. Hmm. Well, I think I'll end the stream here, okay? Because, like, we went through a lot and mostly it's gonna be slog for now. I'll continue. Well, either I continue until, let's see. I think maybe I'll be somewhere in dust, okay? Because I wanna go and, um, I want to go to the to the valley. It's not not the valley, the ridge. Okay, I want to go to the ridge to like find it. Okay? Like I need to check on the, um, uh, I need to go and check on the, um, how to, like, find the clues, uh, for the alien civilization. Okay, and I'll con I'll pick it up from there. Okay, so that's my plan. So with that said, I'll end the stream here. And I'll see you guys later, okay? I think I will make my thumbnail for the dark lady, which I'll do in a while. So with that said, see you guys later. And please like and subscribe if you like it. See you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.